I'm Tim. Welcome to my channel and this guitar lesson where we're going to be learning Jump in the Fire, a classic track off of Metallica's debut album Kill Em All. Now this is the first full length tutorial of a Metallica song that I've done on my channel, but due to the number of requests that I get for their music, I'm going to do every single song off of every single album. So if you love Metallica, be sure to hit like and subscribe so that you can learn all of their stuff. Now let's get going and learn Jump in the Fire. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised to find that the rhythm parts to Jump in the Fire aren't too complicated. Now, the first 16 measures of the intro also function as the chorus riff, and you're going to need to know the G minor pentatonic slash blues scale to get through this, since the riff is pretty much straight out of that scale. So starting on the third fret, and I'll put the diagram up for you so you can follow along, on the third fret, we're going to play this pattern. And you'll want to commit that to memory to make the rhythm parts easier, as well as we're going to need it for the leads, because most of the leads are based directly out of that scale as well. Now, let's get into the first 16 measures of the intro, and it can be broken apart nicely into four measure sections. So the first four measures goes like this. <laughs> Okay, so we're just doing a one measure thing and repeating it three times, and it's directly out of that G minor blues scale. It's, we're gonna go the third fret on the bottom string, followed by the sixth fret. And then we're gonna go up to the fifth string and do a three and a four. And then we're gonna go up to the third fret of the fourth string. And then we're gonna walk back down on the fifth string. Put a palm mute on that whole thing. Might have to experiment where you're gonna put that palm mute just so you don't kill it. If it's too, if you put your palm mute up too high, you're gonna kill those strings, right? And if you put it too far back, there'll be no palm mute at all. So you just wanna experiment and get that chuggy sound, I call it. Okay, and now you repeat that three times. One and two and two and four and one and two and three and four and. and now we're gonna do two power chords. Starting on the third fret of the A string, that's a C power chord, followed by a B flat on the first fret. And the tricky thing there is to hit the upbeats. So we go one and two, three and four. So there's a little syncopation there. Now we get into the next set of four uh, measures and that pretty much the same thing except for that third measure. So we repeat that same thing that we did in the first set of four measures. Do that twice and now that third measure we just go back up to the fourth for string and we repeat that little walk down the A string. Okay. And repeat those power chords for measure four. Moving on to the third set of four. Okay, again, the first two measures, we repeat that little figure that we started with. And again, it's the third measure that changes. So starting that third measure, we wanna start on the fifth fret of the D string. But we're going to precede that with a little grace note hammer. So you want to actually play the third fret on the D string first, but quickly hammer onto the fifth fret. And then back to that third fret. So then we go down to the fifth fret of the A string, back up to the third fret of the D string, fifth fret of the A string, and then do our little walk down through the blue scale with the fourth fret, the third fret, 
string, and then down to the third fret of our bottom string. So there's gonna be a little finger roll there at the very end. So you have to think ahead and fret that third fret on the A string with the flat of your finger so that you can roll up to the tip to get that bottom note on the bottom string. And then we're gonna walk up that blue scale. Do this straight up the scale, nothing fancy there in that measure four. So, uh, just take the palm mute off of those very two final notes. And then we get into our last group of four, and that's the exact same as the second group of four. So here we go. So we've already covered that. It's the same, like I said, as the second group of four. So there's our first 16 measures. You also now know the chorus riff, since this functions as the chorus riff as well. And we can get into the next eight measures of the intro. And those next eight measures are a riff that also functions as the verse riff. So after we're done this rhythm part, we pretty much have all the parts uh, of the song besides the lead, which we'll get to in a second. So here we go. The verse riff sounds like this. Okay, so it's a four measure thing uh, that repeats around. So we start off down on the first fret of the bottom string and keep a palm mute on this. We go one, three, three, one, three, open, B flat power chord. Back, drop down to the F power chord and make those nice and short, nice staccato. So I, Hit them and release pressure at the same time I drop this hand. Make them nice and short like that. And then we repeat that little that uh, palm muted figure on the bottom string. And come up to the third fret on the A string. Okay, so now there's some dead strums in there. And just rest your fingers lightly over the strings. And don't worry about getting random harmonics or anything. It all sounds cool. Just get three muted strums in there. Okay? And just like before, this whole riff is all down strokes. That's the whole intro, and then we get into the verse. And like I said, the verse is that riff that we just went over. The only time that we have to change anything is the very last rotation into the chorus. We have to change the very final bar just so that it sags nicely back into the chorus riff. So that verse riff plays four times for the verse, and the final time, the fourth time, it's gonna do this. And then we get back into the chorus that way. So the final repetition of that riff, the first two measures are the exact same as what we've been doing. It's just the third and fourth measures that change. And it's the same, except when we, you reach that third fret power chord, you just wanna make it nice and short. And wait two beats, and then on beats three and four, two nice short hits on the fourth fret power chord. And then that sags nicely back into the chorus. Now, that pretty much gets us through the tune. The only time that there's a new riff is underneath the first lead solo break. There's a new rhythm riff that comes in that the solo goes over top of, and it sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so really the easiest riff of the whole song. We're just doing a series of power chords, moving them along the bottom string. So we're starting on the sixth fret. Moving down to the fourth fret, back up to the sixth fret. And then we're moving everything down, repeating that same figure, but starting on the third fret. And then you can repeat that uh, underneath the solo. So there's all the rhythm parts. Like I said, not too complicated, right? Not too bad. Only three little riffs there for you. Um, remember though, the, to get it really authentic sounding, use all downstrokes like they do. 
But to make it a little bit easier for yourself, you can definitely alternate pick if this is new for you. So alternate picking definitely re eases some of the strain off of the pick hand. All right, totally acceptable, you can do that too. And now let's get into the lead parts. The first lead lick that we encounter is in the intro of the song. And it happens right before the singing kicks in and it goes like this. Okay, so like I said before, I hinted at... You're really gonna have to know your G minor pentatonic scale. This lead lick is directly out of that. So we're going to take the fifth fret on the G string and bend it up a whole step. And then there's a string skip up to the high string where we hit the third fret on the high string. And then we get into a little repeating lick, a little quick repeating pentatonic thing. Okay, so we hit the sixth fret on our B string and pull off to the third fret, and then come down to the G string and hit the fifth fret, and back up to the third fret of the B string, and then just repeat those four notes. Okay, then to get out of that, we do this pull off one more time and down to the fifth fret of the G string, but we don't come back up. Okay, we start walking down the scale. So we down to the third fret of the G string, down to the fifth fret of the D string, back up to the third fret of the G string, and then bend the sixth fret of the B string and give it some vibrato. You can do it with the bar, right? Okay, and that's that lead lick. Let's get into solo number one. Lead break number one starts off with some fast alternate picking along the bottom string. Uh, and we're just soloing over top of this. Okay, so we're just following along with those chords. So we're gonna hold the sixth fret and we're gonna alternate pick 16th notes. So that's one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So you're doing a down, up, down, up every single beat. One E and a two E and a. And you're going to do that for two measures ending on beat four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four. And then come down to the third fret and do that again. Okay, now when we come back up to the sixth fret, this is where gets a little bit tricky and you don't have to be too precise with the timing, but we want to slide up an octave. We're going up to, from the B flat on the sixth fret to the B flat on the 18th fret. So they're both B flats, just octaves apart. And we're just kind of sliding back and forth between those to give it a cool little effect. But there's no real set times, like there's not really a set amount of times to pick each one because we're really just banging away on 16th notes and sliding our finger. As long as your hand keeps doing 16th notes and staying in time, it's going to sound right. Right? So the way I think about it is more when am I sliding? And I'm sliding on upbeats like one, two, and. So I'll do that my first slide on the end of two. One, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, and four, and one, two. Okay, so you just have to practice that over and over and over until you get a feel for those slides. One, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, and four, one, two. And then we go back to the third fret. So I'm sorry that if that's confusing. Not really a better way of describing that though. Um, it's just making sure your hands are doing 16th notes and getting used to sliding at the same time you're staying in time with that pick hand doing those 16th notes. Um, and that's all there is to that. And then we just repeat that again on the third fret. Uh, and then we get into the main lead stuff going on. So that starts off with some pull-offs here. We go. 
string, okay? And we're starting on the B string, six, three, open, to the G string, five, three, open. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna start getting into uh, some crazier playing here. So we're gonna bar the third fret, and we hit the third fret on our B string, followed by a double stop there on barring the two high strings. Come down our pentatonic scale. Okay, so we go six, three, down to the G string, five, three, again with our little double stop, down to the sixth fret. And then we're gonna go three on the B string, bend that G string up a whole step. And then do our little string skip like we did in the intro again. Okay, and then come down, a little quick pull off there from six to three to five. And then do, on the G string now, we're gonna do a little, another little quick pull off from five to three and come down to the G string or the D string, sorry. And then, Okay, we're sliding up an octave, and again, we're in the G minor pentatonic. Just up an octave higher than where we started. So, do your little pull-offs with a gradual slide, and you wanna end with the 17th fret bend. Okay, and then we do our little string skip thing again, and we come down that the uh, pentatonic scale again with more pull-offs. So we go from 18 to 15, 17 to 15, twice, down to the 17th fret of the D string. Okay, and then we're gonna slide as we palm mute an open A. Because we're gonna get into some double stops here. We're hitting the third fret with a little quarter step grind bend. And then we're doing that again on the 15th fret. So again, we're just playing with that octave idea. Same notes, just octaves apart. You might wanna change fingers though, rather than just hopping your first finger, I like to do the ones on the third fret with my first finger and the ones on the 15th fret with my third finger. Okay, so. Okay, now there's some open strings there to transition into that next lick. So. So I just do a little rake. You can kind of hear that in there. That's how I duplicate that. So it's like a four and that's the timing where that would occur. So just like in the intro, it's that same repeating pentatonic lick. Okay, the third time that we do that repeating though, we're going to pull off from the fifth, rather than going up to the third, up to the B string, like, rather than doing that, we're going to go, we're pulling off to the third fret of the G string. Just gives it a little variety. Okay, and then we're going to go six, three, pull off again, down to the fifth fret of the G string, third fret of the G string, fifth fret of the D string, back up to the G string, and then bend that fifth fret and then release it and pull off to the third fret. And then we come down to the D string, back up to the G string, little five to three pull off, down to the D string. So five to three, down to the D string, and then walk down our pentatonic, three, come down to the A string, five, three, one. We're walking down out of that basic pattern now. One, on the A string, bend the third fret and release it. Back to the first fret, to the bottom string, third fret, back up to the A string. And there's just a little random slide there. You don't have to be, you don't have to hit anything too accurate. Now we cap this solo off with some double stop bends. We come up to our pattern that's an octave higher. We bar the 17th fret with our third finger and we bend them up. So we bend up and release to the 15th fret, to the 17th fret on the D string, 
back up to the barred 15th fret. So it's just a little repeating lick again. And then we come out of that by bending the 17th fret. And then we do that string skip again to coming down our pentatonic scale again, 18 to 15 on the B string, down to the G string, uh, 17, 15, D string 17, back up to our G string, 15, 17, where you bend and release, pull off to the 15, and bend that 18th fret, and give us some vibrato. And there's your solo. Outro solo starts off with a long string of 16th notes. So we're going to start on the 13th fret of our low string and with a hammer to the 15th fret. And then we come up to the A string and double pick that 13th fret. And then slide from 15 to 17 up to the D string 15th fret where we double pick that note again. And then a little bit of up and down in the G minor pentatonic scale here. A really cool repeating pull-off lick there. And then we get out of that by bending, double picking that 15th fret, and double picking the 18th fret. And then do, pulling off to the 15th fret, to down to the 17th fret. And then down and up in our pentatonic scale again. With a 17th fret bend. So, the first four measures of that solo, really slow, will sound like this. Okay, now, coming into the next four measures of the solo, I hit some open strings again, like I did in that first solo. So really quick, you don't really hear that uh, really dissonant sound that it would create, but it just creates a cool little effect to get to the 18th uh, fret bend that we're going to do on the B string. So, 18th fret, hold it, re uh, release it to the 15th, and then bend the 18th on the high string. And do that twice, and again, release it to the 15th fret. So quite a few bends going on there. And then we get into a fast little pentatonic thing again on the top two strings. And then we get into a double stop bend here again, kind of pedal steely type thing where we put our pinky on the 18th fret of the B string while we bend the 17th fret on the G string at the same time. And then we hit that again on our third beat. And Again, one more time on our fourth beat as we climb up to bend the 18th fret on the B string again. Now this next set of four measures in the solo, we start off with bending the 18th fret on the B string up a whole step, and we hold it, and release it to the 15th fret, and go down to the 17th fret of the G string, and then play around a little bit in that minor pentatonic scale. And now this 15th fret, I didn't catch it when the album was playing at full speed, but when I slowed it down at half speed, I realized he was actually bending really quickly. So it's like... It is there. If you slow it down to half speed, uh, you'll hear that 
uh, really quick. Um, but you could just bend it a little quarter of a step bend too. That would sound good. Right? That Just a little nudge. Uh, that sounds good. So... And then we repeat these ideas. And then we get into a new repeating lick. And it's a really fast pentatonic lick, a uh, solid string of 16th notes here, where we're going to do a... Okay, so that's just pulling off from 18 to 15. Uh, and getting that 17 to 15. So it's really, again, getting back to that same kind of a lick that we did in the intro. Um, not too dissimilar from that. Just watch out for our in the middle there where we're not going to repeat the, the double pull. There's two instances in a row there where you just do the, the single pull off. And then back to the double. And then to end that off, what you're doing is down pick eighth notes. So your pick hand is going to want to go one and two and, and you're going to end on three. While your first uh, fret hand is really just trilling between the 15th and the 18th frets. So once again, you don't have to be super accurate. You're probably not going to play it 100% the same way every time, but you just kind of want to trill at the same time you're picking eighth notes. One and two and three, and just end right on the downbeat of three. That's how he's creating that, uh, you know, sort of unique, uh, exciting sound where you're not sure exactly what to predict there with that. Um, now we get into the coolest part of the solo, in my opinion, where he starts alternate picking straight 16th notes on that high string again, and we go. So you're just going one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, and just changing that very first 16th note of every beat. So you're starting off by hitting the 17th fret and then the 18th fret and then up to the 20th fret, back to the 18th fret. So that's your four beats. And you're gonna play that four times. And the fifth time, you're gonna reach out to hit the 20th fret on beat four. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And then that changes the order of the notes for the last three measures. You're gonna go the 20th fret on beat one, to the 18th fret on beat two, 17th fret on beat three, and 18th fret on beat four. So those last three measures would be Right, and then we can get out into some more fast pentatonic pull-off stuff. So that whole string of alternate picking is going to be like this. And then we're out of it into the next part of the solo. Now, the next part of the solo, again, we're sticking with our pentatonic scale and we're going to do some fast pull offs along that top string. And really, that same sort of idea that we did here in the previous section, we're really just moving that idea up a string set to the top. Okay, so we're doing double pull offs between 18 and 15. And so here it is really slow. And then we're out of it into our next little section. And once we get out of it, the rest of the solo slows down a little bit. Not any 16ths really to worry about for the rest of this solo, but a lot of bending again. So our next measure starts off with that 18th fret bend. And then we get into some triplets. And then some just straight eighth notes. Double stop bend. And then we raise and lower those in time with eighth notes. One and two and three and... And then we get out of that on beat four. And 
and end that little walk down with a bend on the 15th fret and release to the 15th down to 15 back up to the 13th and then we walk back up our pentatonic scale slide back into our main pentatonic box and end with that little pedal steel thing again where you're holding your pinky on the 18th fret and bending the 17th fret and then it fades out at that point so that's it we're done i hope you enjoyed this guitar lesson and learning metallica's jump in the fire don't forget i've got tons more metallica tunes coming as well as theory improv shred stuff i mean pretty much everything guitar related right so have some fun and remember that if you screw up it's your guitar's fault